Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Red Pill Tamales. I am your host, Chingo Bling. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Gather around. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? We are burning a pumpkin carrot cake candle. Yeah. Courtesy of Twin Candle Company. Yeah, man. If you guys want to get y'all's, twincandleco.com and check them out. Or if you want to check it out in person, go to Painted Tree. Painted Tree in Sugarland, Texas. Yes, we got a little storefront there, a little boutique. That's right. Shout out to Corpus Christi, Texas. You came out. You brought the energy. People were ready to party. Yeah. The Freedom of Speech Tour was a freedom rally. Indeed. Man, Corpus Christi, y'all sold it out, man. Mesquite Street, Tex- uh, Mesquite Street Comedy Club in Corpus Christi, Texas. Bro, people were ready. Yeah. I mean... Give me the deets. Give me the deets. Uh, Javi Luna, he was like, hey, man, I kind of wasn't feeling like a real lion. Yeah, I started doubting myself. He's like, I was doing a lot of private shows, private events. He's like, but it hits different. And um, we had the, the honor, dude. We, we let loose. We went in. The room was shaking. Uh, Javi was like, bro, you been writing? I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm ready. I came out hot, bro. Be like, I've been podcasting is what I've been doing. That's right. I was talking shit about the uh, the freeze we went through. Mm. Um, that room is awesome, by the way. If people have never been, it's like, I've been to a lot of places with you. Theaters, big rooms, improvs, but that club we did, upstairs. We did, the, we did the big room this time. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't think I saw the big room. We did the bigger room. It's like next door. Oh, dope, but, dope. Um, Where they were having the quinceanera last time? That's the, yes, the quinceanera salon. Dude, that, they were jamming last time. Yeah, and um, they're building a new club. So this is going to be like a premiere comedy club south of houston which Ooh. never really existed a lot of the big comedians when they would come hit texas and do a run mm-hmm. they really couldn't go south of texas i mean south of houston they'd be like eh, you starting to get into the b rooms and little old school theaters but my next stop for the freedom of speech tour is ontario california i'll see you guys july 14th then we head on over to oxnard q top of the food chain july 15th irvine california august 11th san jose what up san Jose? August 18th, and then Denver, Colorado, August 27th through the 29th. Then we are in Brea, California, finally. That one got postponed so many times, September 15th. Then we have Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. And baby is on the way, and we're just trying to get everything in order. Hell yeah. um, my wife's stomach is getting bigger by the day. She has a boot camp coming up. She's doing a boot camp event. And I'm like, damn, don't do no no jumping. Yeah. And we're doing a live podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, she's doing that. Uh, what day at, is it? At Juice Caboose, uh, June 16th. Yeah, June 16th, her lounge podcast. Uh, they're going to be doing it live. So you guys can show up. It'll be intimate and nice. So, yeah, I'm on tour. I'm a stand-up comedian. Don't get it twisted. And shout out to all the patrons, man. When we were at the show in Corpus, so many people were like, uh like somebody yelled out like tia and like rpt it was like a gang and shit rpt yeah motherfuckers is america first i fucking love it and i was dropping i was dropping some little messages in there like man where are all the couples at and i was like look man the nuclear family is under attack and i found a way to weave it into my jokes and i'm like props to the couples i was like if anybody's here on a date and you've been with her like six months and you kind of know she's marriage material you know she's the one Lock that shit in. I was like, what our community needs is strong families. We need we need strong men. Not all this frou-frou shit they trying to push down our throat. So uh, I managed to deliver a message as well. All right. So I, I felt like I was preaching a little bit. Like, uh, Dan Carlin over here. Not Dan Carlin. Uh, what's the other gentleman? Ed Young. No, man. Pastor Ed Young. Uh, <laughs> no, the comedian, George Carlin. Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But a uh, shout out to the patrons, man. You guys were representing. It's great to meet you guys in person, to put like a face to the name and people say, hey, man, I fuck with you even more now. And a lot of my fans grew up. Not everybody's still in that, you know, leftist agenda. Not everybody's still a pawn to the globalists. Well, the way you put it last week, too, is like not everybody's still stuck in 2001. Yeah, like w- my crowd, it, I think, is open minded. We're evolving. And. I think it's important that our community starts to understand what identity politics is. What's Marxism? You know what I mean? How is the how is the white liberal using us as a pawn? So, you know, just, you know, keep your head on a swivel. Man. I like it, man. Can we, real quick, I know this isn't uh, Chingo Chat, but where South uh, Houston-ish you, t- you think this club is going to be, or do you know? Oh, it's going to be in Corpus, that new club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. Cor- oh, same okay. people. Oh, it's okay. I don't know if they're going to name it Mesquite Street or they're going to rename it something else. But, um... I'll let the cat out the bag. 
and uh, I think they're going to do a big grand opening real soon. Sweet. We haven't seen it. They just said it's like really nice. It's like premier A club status. Dope. But the patrons, man, if you have not signed up, hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and you can ensure our freedom of speech. We are protected with this business model. It's harder for us to just get deplatformed because about what? A year ago, a lot of people were saying, hey, maybe this Beatles leaked from a lab. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, no, how dare you? Don't say that. You're crazy. They're ready to deplatform you and give you a strike on your uh, YouTube channel and this and that. You know, Facebook, they keep getting caught, you know, how they how they treat, you know, different topics. Like, uh oh, this person saying something about the, the shout, the, the jab. But uh, this is why it's so important, man. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. This show is powerful because of the audience. It's the audience that's going to make shit happen. It's not just Rob and I sitting here shooting the shit, talking about current events and mm-hmm. breaking down headlines and telling y'all the, the, how the news be spinning things. You know, I, th- these, is, these are concerned citizens, bro. We all want the same thing. We just want safe communities. To raise our kids, we want to put our little our little daughters in gymnastics class and dance class. Like we just want to provide. We want simple shit. We want security. That's why our families came to this country. Mm-hmm. And what we're not gonna do is be asleep at the wheel and let these people drive us off a cliff. And before you know it, we ain't got no rights. They attacking the Constitution. They trying to pack the Supreme Court. They trying to turn us into Venezuela. Do not let it happen. They want to demonize your patriotism. Do not let it happen. They want to label you a patriotic extremist. Don't let it happen. Damn, coming in hot. as hot as the fucking humidity outside right now. I'm sticky out there. Bro. I, I had to change shirts three times a day, bro. Yeah, I wish I would have brought a different change of shirts. I had to change a tire, and I was like, God, I'm going to be late. And then I get here, you hadn't even opened my message. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> you know, if I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and I had to call a lifeline, I'd have to second think calling you, even if I knew you knew the answer. Yeah, don't call Chingo. No. Very hard man to get a hold of. No, I was just moving stuff, man. I'm out here in this heat. <laughs> no, I know. Where to start, man? Where to start? I got uh, the, the show map, since I didn't print it, is on your phone. Yes, sir. Um, and you did bring up a lot of the things we're going to talk about today. But first off, uh, there's a video. Shout out, Ed sent it to me, but I happened to have seen it just as it was posted. And it was Project Veritas uh, Facebook whistleblower. Did you mm. see that video by chance? I didn't see the video. I saw a screenshot of basically how Facebook had different tiers yes. of how they categorize you based on whether you're sharing an anecdote of how somebody felt after getting a jab. I believe this is it. Here we go. When it comes time to standing up for the world I want my children to live in, I don't want to leave them a world to where they don't have these liberties. Leaked internal documents. You aren't allowed to have voice uh, trying to control this content before it even makes it onto your page, before you even see it. Facebook uses classifiers in their algorithms to determine certain content to be what they call vaccine hesitant, what they call vaccine hesitancy, and without the user's knowledge, they assign a score to these comments that's called a VH score, vaccine hesitancy score. Based on that score, we'll denote what is the comment will, depending on the content within the comment. They refer to the test size as 1.5%, I'm not exactly real which, sure which pool that pulls from, but I think it's comments on authoritative health pages. Why do we believe they've already rolled this out? All C-19 vaccine, global, currently global, 66 languages, and the very first thing that, uh, that, that brought me to the conclusion that they're, they wanted to do this globally is they were developing it in, like, you know, as many languages as they could get their hands on. The narrative being, get the vaccine, the vaccine is good for you, everyone should get it, and if you don't, you will be singled out as an enemy of society. It seems like any facts that escape a particular narrative are omitted, demoted, deboosted, Absolutely. banned? Yes. Considered dangerous to society? Express it any way possible. You can have these conversations at the water cooler in an office. Absolutely. At Facebook, the location, Facebook, but you're not allowed to go onto Facebook and write this stuff. No. That's ironic. It is very ironic. They want to build a community where everybody complies, not where people can have open discourse and dialogue about the most personal and private and intimate decisions that anybody could ever face in their life, which is regarding their own body, their own health. The policy is going to keep expanding until anything can violate it. If this was scaled larger and scaled to Twitter and the internet as a whole, it is way worse than anything that could happen for me getting fired from my job. Because it's more about more than me, it's about 
It really everyone in the world. And it came down to the point where I had to make a decision to do what was right. I have to do something. Hmm. Very interesting times we're living in. <laughs> Some would say Orwellian. You know, you have the Ministry of Truth, which yeah. is a concept from that book. Facebook and Twitter have become some of the largest corners of the internet. This is like the public square where discussions happen. Right. The town halls, they say. Yeah, so traditionally, in this country, you kind of have freedom to discuss certain things. Yeah. And I'm sure the argument is, well, Chingo, go start your own Facebook if you want to say whatever you want to say. Go start your own Twitter if you want to set your community guidelines how you want. However... You know, to the average American, it's uh, disheartening or something. I don't know what the word is. No, you're right. <clears throat> and I kind of want to keep riffing on that because the, that, that reply of people saying, hey, we'll go start your own social network or do whatever, it's not, it's not that simple. The conversation isn't that black and white. When these platforms have become, like you said, the cornerstones of the, of the town hall conversations that we have throughout the country, throughout the world, but mm -hmm. we're talking about the U.S. right now, right? And you get kicked off of those. If a sitting president during a campaign cycle gets kicked off and they're censoring things as said by insiders, that has to trigger something in your head that says something's not right. It's heading in a trajectory that isn't ideal for the American citizen. Mm -hmm. You've had like Microsoft and other big players try to develop their own social platforms and it not work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it than just go start your own social platform. Yeah. That's the stupidest approach to what the censorship that, that's happening is, is happening. It's just, yeah. it's really asinine. Yeah, big tech. Big with a capital B. You can pretty much ca capitalize all the letters. Yeah. Big ass tech. I mean, tech controls so much of today's conversation. Um, it's like, obviously, they're really pro-jab. They, they trying to promote that jab on big tech. Mm -hmm. like, like, their stance currently is they obviously believe that, I guess they believe that everyone should get it. And that if you are hesitant... You're slowly going to be ostracized. What's the thing? Ostracized. Word? It's a metal way. It's a metal. It's almost like um, social credit score, right? Like, like they got over there in the China. Um, and it is. It's turn everybody on everybody that's not complying with whatever's on social media. And is there? Have you thought of a better word for social media? Like they call it the town hall. It's like, it's like the watering hole. There's got to be another word that we could, maybe the TIA can help us come up with because it's larger than that. It's larger than just somewhere where you go post shit. Like, it has a bigger meaning when it comes to day-to-day -day life, unfortunately. Yeah, because if you get kicked off of Facebook, Twitter, etc., then your opinions become... You're just the old man in a field talking to himself. Yes, it goes like back to screaming you. Screaming at the sky. Yeah, it goes back to the people in the small towns that are now back in those small towns and only in those little echo chambers and nothing else. And especially if you want to have some type, some type of influence on that community and beyond, you can't do it without those platforms. So it's almost like they have a monopoly. Um, you know, they're, they're not... This, this is what trips me out. Facebook, as a company, they're obviously not taking a stance of... Hey, if you're hesitant, you're allowed to express that. You know, if you're, let's just say a, a woman says, hey, I got the shot last week. Now my menstrual cycle's thrown off. You're not allowed to say that. You're going to be labeled and the algorithm's going to sift you out and put you in this pile, in this category of uh, VH, you know, jab, hesitant. So they're obviously taking a stance that they're trying to be on the side of the World Health Organization or and the CDC or whoever. And Big Pharma, really. It's like Big Tech backing up Big Pharma mm -hmm. and backing up the Democrats. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's very partisan. They've tried to, um, you know, slander and demonize MAGA people, America First people, Republicans, conservatives, Trump supporters. Even though, here's the interesting part, even though a lot of the black community is VH, you know, jab hesitant. So a lot of them aren't necessarily Republican, not all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, hmm, now it's starting to cross party lines. Yeah. I don't know where this is going to lead to, man. But as we keep seeing, quote unquote, the science evolve, more than likely, Facebook is going to shift their stance when it's like, all right, people start dropping like fly or, or the magnet. I know the magnet shit is some conspiracy thing, but um. You know, they shedding. I don't that sounds conspiracy to me. <laughs> I know, so conspiratorial. Don't shed on me. That don't sounds very don't shed on me. Uh I got my tinfoil hat today, so um Don't shed on me. When I talk about those things, I might have to throw that on. But you know, it's like for example, the Wuhan lab thing. In the beginning, a lot of people had the hypothesis, like, hey man, 
Maybe this thing didn't come from a bat suit or from a pangolin way a thousand miles away from mm-hmm. where the shit was at. And people would say it. And then they'd be like, no, motherfucker, you cuckoo. Put your tinfoil hat on. And they would disappear. I mean, not literally. Maybe some of them literally. But they would disappear from online sources. You know, they would just be deplatformed. They'd be completely shadow banned. You wouldn't be able to read anything that they posted, including the president at the time of the United States. Yeah. Trump, man, how many times has Trump been right? How many times, like, every time he'd open his mouth and he'd say, like, no, it came from a lab from China. And then they'd be like... Look at this cool, cool reality TV racist orange mofo spreading that misinformation. I was listening to Chris Stefano, old old uh, podcast alum and friend of Chingo Bling, yeah, with Andrew Santino, and they were talking about if had anybody else coined fake news the way Trump did, it would still be it would hold so much weight and still be at the forefront of everybody's heads. But because he said it. It's like, it's dismissed as well, if it's not true, you which know, it is. You know, Hillary and them said it first. They did, but he, it, he took it from them. Yeah. And, but yeah. And just he, like the big lie. He took that from them. Right. Too. And the way, but they, the way he was able to present it and get his people behind him with that phrase, it was nothing that they were like, unlike anything they were able to do. Oh yeah. No. Talk about branding. Yeah. Whether you like them or not, homeboy is pretty good at branding some shit. Just like, you know, when he would put nicknames on the competition you know lying ted yeah and it's like damn now you can't unsee it fucking uh jeb bush i forgot what his was uh low energy jeb (laughs) 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 that boy's a stand-up comic he had a ton of them man but uh yeah crooked hillary crooked hillary is a good one it's it's all pretty applicable like it all makes sense if you kind of just think about it like you said like him or not you have to give the guy credit where, where it's due and it's really hard for people to give him credit even when it is due, unfortunately. So should he run again in 2024, which it's looking like you... Remember when, when everything was kind of, you know, getting wrapped up? They were like, there's no way he's going to run again. There's no way he's going to run again. He's going to go off Especially into, after that seditious insurrection, the saddest day <clears throat> uh, since the Civil War, according to Joseph Biden. And why are more of those videos coming out? The ones that are just like, oh, look, they got let in. Like new angles, new people posting videos. Because Trump's always right, apparently fucking crazy someone sent me one last night um or it might have been this morning sorry if i don't remember who it was and it was a whole it was a new angle from a whole new part of the capital that i hadn't seen a whole new person with a maga hat on a white guy yelling at the cops like what you, you're not doing anything you're letting these people into the most sacred one of the most sacred places in the country did you see that video no and he's just like you're fucking you're not you're worthless what are you doing and people are just walking in there unattested at all well they want to do a commission and many people on the right would argue that's a good idea Maybe they could take advantage <clears throat> of that commission and, and, and basically get a couple, let's say a couple of Republicans on that commission committee and be able to ask the right questions so that they can get to the bottom of, okay, it was some shenanigans. Yeah. You know, y'all needed this event. Y'all spun <clears throat> it. Y'all turned it into, uh, basically what they're trying to do is they using this January, this one six event as a way to label all these little patriots or anybody that's on the right and label them all extremists. Uh, they want to, you know, kind of like how they did in Germany back in the day was the clean and the unclean. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I sound conspiratorial saying that, but God forbid they get to run with their agenda and get to just label everybody. Like, let me find out you got a Bible in your house. You know what I'm saying? Let me find out you got a flag in your house. Let me find out how you voted. Let me find out you tweeted something at once. Let me find out you thought El Virus came out of a lab. You know, let me find out you think that uh, one six, the event happened on one six, was just a riot that got out of control and they were trespassing, but nobody had weapons. It wasn't a coup. Nobody got hurt except for Ashley Babbitt, the Trump supporter that got shot, and a cop who died of a stroke the next day. And if you think that, then <gasps> you part of the insurrection. You part of the big lie. Uh, uh, what do you mean these elections weren't the cleanest and clearest and, you know, unhackable? It's like, God forbid you think that it's like the government be like, these are the cleanest elections and they couldn't have been hacked. And then like two weeks later, pipeline gets hacked. The oops. Uh, what did we say? We were going to retract on that. Speaking of retractments and backstepping, you had brought up Fauci before. Fauci, ouch. You before we, that's, uh, that's gross. Fauci, ouchie. The Fauci, ouch. Um, you brought him up. What was on the top of your head regarding him? Yeah, this is a great, great segue because of, of what we're talking about, how narratives change, yeah. new information comes up. <clears throat> so we all know from the beginning, 
a lot of people, including Trump and Trump's advisors and whistleblowers from the Wuhan lab, doctors that had to, I forget the lady's name, but uh, one lady in particular, she was a scientist at the Wuhan lab and she had to basically bounce from China, fear, right? Fear the CCP. And she blew the whistle and was like, hey, y'all, this thing definitely came from this lab. And, and she's like, don't believe the hype. It is not from a pangolin. It's not from no bat soup. And Trump was among one of the people that's like, I believe it came from a lab. And of course, they label you crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, on May 5th, Rand Paul, senator from Kentucky, he's senator, right? Mm -hmm. From Kentucky. He, I guess there was a hearing, a congressional hearing or something, and they had Fauci on the stand, and he was drilling him, right? Doctor, Dr. Rand Paul, yeah. right? Because they never want to call him doctor, but they, you better call Dr. Jill Biden. You better, you better call her Dr. B, and you know, don't forget the doctor. So Rand Paul was drilling Fauci. He's like, hey, man, ain't it true? You know, did you not fund with grant money, United States taxpayer money, gain-of-function research through the NIH, through the University of Galveston, through University of North Carolina, in conjunction with scientists from over there, did y'all not cut a check and y'all were doing gain of function research on a coronavirus? Fucking with the protein spikes and making it, you know, figuring out how it could be weaponized. Uh, uh, no, absolutely not. That, that question, uh, you know, he got all Tony Danza, who's the boss. Uh, that question, <laughs> that question, I don't like, blah, 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 blah. So he kind of weaseled his way out of it. And then on May 11th, Fauci had to change his tune. was like, yeah, man, I think we should probably uh, consider the hypothesis that... Uh, and they're like, didn't they just ask you that? Yeah, I ain't like how he asked me. Yeah, he did say that, I think. Actually, <laughs> I have uh, this video. This might be the one queued up most recently, just the other day. Uh... Fauci was asked during an event earlier this month about whether he was confident that COVID-19 developed naturally. But no, I'm not convinced uh, about that. I think that we should continue to investigate what went on in China until we find out to the best of our ability exactly what happened. The coronavirus was first reported in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December 2019, and many believe it could have begun in a lab there and escaped. Fauci was pressed on that theory during a Senate hearing on May 11 and said he would support a further investigation during an exchange with Senator Roger Marshall. Dr. Fauci, do you think it's possible that COVID-19 arose from a lab accident at a lab in Wuhan, and should it be fully investigated? That possibility certainly exists, and I am totally in favor of a full investigation of whether that could have happened. After he gave them 18 months to hide all the damn evidence. And have his friends, oops, sorry. <clears throat> Man, come on. And have his friends investigate you know, a lot of the aspects of what people were asking. And also, after weeks and weeks of going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with Rand Paul and just denying just that. This was last week. Now this is on the 11th. And this is why y'all tune into RPT. <laughs> because the main, this is what the mainstream media does. <laughs> First, they're like, um, this reality TV show is saying that it <laughs> leaked from a lab? We need to have more respect for the CCP. And this, uh, <laughs> this Dr. Fauci guy, Fuck. he... He also, he had a little Freudian slip. He was like... He did. You heard him? He uh -huh. said, we collaborated with uh, many uh, uh, Chinese scientists. Yep. Yeah, boy, mm -hmm. we, know what it, we know what time it is, homeboy. I'm glad you saw that we video. We know what time it is. It was a really, really short at the intro of something he was talking about. And it's like, he almost said the truth. Yeah, man, look, the American people ain't stupid. No. We might have fallen asleep. You know, we had it so good for so long that we got lazy. We got soft. All right? But 2020 brought a lot of things to the light. So, you know, to quote the Washington Post, what is it? Lightness, uh, democracy dies in darkness. Something like that. And shame on these traitors. If you want to talk about sedition as traitors, it's these people, man. These globalists, for example, these big corporations that play the woke game, this is what they're doing, bro. The Chinese population is so attractive, you know, business in China is so attractive that they're willing to throw the American public under the bus and promote uh, cultural Marxist narratives that, you know, police, all police are bad and uh, America's a racist country, you know, 1619 Project type of uh, cultural Marxist type of crap. These big corporations are willing to promote that. Because they know that in the big scheme of things, they're willing to sacrifice America and, and, and because, you know, 
the rest of the world is so great and so big. You know, they're like, we can make so much money with China. And who knows? Maybe maybe they just know the play. Or maybe someone from China was like, we need you to <laughs> promote cultural Marxist. Hey, this is on YouTube, man. I don't know if you want to use that accent. It's not an accent. I'm just doing a <laughs> mysterious spy voice, you know? Is that the Swalwell voice? Is he that what he uses I mean, to get spies? I mean, you know... So that could yeah that was swalwell that was my eric swalwell impersonation like mm -hmm. you know uh we need you to push cultural marxist narrative <laughs> to divide america into a civil war uh but don't worry because you're a transnational corporation and we got your back so speaking of we're going to keep touching on all these things we talked about the ccp uh these traders americans that are fucking silly advertising stuff in in china but before i do i don't want to forget uh, I have an old buddy who I helped get into the podcast world a long time ago. He's since um, started working with a lot of big companies. Long story short, I had coffee with him the other day. Mm -hmm. And he knows that we've been you know, working together since whenever, uh, whatever year ago. And he's always like, he's, he's just a older, not older, but you know, middle-aged white guy who's worked in the energy industry for a long time, was in the military. And he like peeps game at like what we've been doing. So since the last time I saw him, which was probably before we actually started RPT, uh, not based off of what I had taught him or anything, but he always gives me credit for showing him about the podcast game and what he can do with it. He's he's gotten a partnership with a big uh, tech company who's also uh, servicing like the the energy industry. Longer story shorter, uh, he wants us to do the podcast here. And he sent me an email just a little second ago, uh, and kind of just like a rough draft of like what we wants to talk about. But it's it's a, it's they have millions of listeners and it's all professionals in like the energy energy industry. Because when we talk about stuff like this, there's a lot of those things that you can't avoid when it comes to like global, uh, the, the global economy. Oil is never going away. The, the green, there's never going to be a green new deal that takes over completely. You can't make some of the thing, most of the things that green energy needs without oil. You know. So anyway, uh, that's just kind of a little sneak peek for listeners. Like, look forward to to that in the near future, sometime in the summer. And, uh, and I'll tell you the company off air because I don't know exactly what their relationship is, but it's a big tech company and it's an oil and gas company. And it's like, oh, okay, that's a very interesting collaboration. Mm, extremely. Yeah. yeah. And he got, so he got a deal with them and then he got a deal with a, an airline as well for a wow. podcast. Yeah. Damn. So yeah. like he's hustling. Yeah. So there, and it sounds like some of these companies are, and they're moving their, uh, their HQs from, uh, Portland being one of them and New York, the other to Houston. Yeah. Why would you want to be there? Why the fuck would you want to be there? <laughs> why why so why I anyway mean, i mean oregon is beautiful and uh they have it, it's like no sales tax and you know but once they start once their politicians started letting um antifa just have a field day and the poor citizens of portland and business owners they got to open up their front door every day and see encampments and yeah. and constant like well can't, don't make a left turn right there antifa's gonna put a brick through your window um so let's pray for the people of portland hopefully their leadership and uh, their mayor uh, ted wheeler grows a backbone and starts to worry about the citizens and stop being a little punk ass biatch so before we get into the crazier part of uh ccp content we have a john cena clip here uh he actually speaks in i guess it's mandarin <sighs> no mamas but uh so we'll just kind of chat about it after i play it oh man Nihao Zhongguo, just Zhao Xina. 我必須說現在在蘇度語境中,我做很多採訪. Uh, uh, Pretty impressive, right? I Very, didn't, yeah. I didn't know the Yeah, so so he's being a little sycophant in their language. Okay. Yeah, so backstory is he's in China promoting Fast 9. All right. He in an interview in China says in Chinese whatever, TV I guess or whatever it was, that Taiwan would be the first country to see Fast 9. And then, well, they did not that, like that. That's all you. That, hey, let me let, tell us what the backlash. What they what they threaten. What they do. Uh, they. I'll tell you this from the articles I read is they almost didn't even give the threat. They just said you better retract that immediately. I'm sure before the CCP even had a chance to punk John Cena, I'm sure his own Hollywood cohorts, Universal or something, punked. John Cena. They probably whooped him with a piece of bamboo, forced him to learn Mandarin. This this is why, bro. When my wife and I went to Shanghai, I, we had always heard that Hollywood would always uh, kowtow to China. Like, that is a bigger market for them. That the storylines have to jive 
um, you would see things forced into storylines. Like all of a sudden, Transformers. Oh, we're going to start the movie out in China. Or like just things like that. Um, where it really had nothing to do with the plot. It's just like we need to show China in a positive light. Kind of like the way Joe Biden, like, oh, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know, a, a strong, powerful China is good mm-hmm. for us. They're not going to eat our lunch. They're not stealing our tech. And, uh, you know, they don't have. Uh, That's going to lead into the next clip. But they don't have going. child labor over there. They're not doing genocide over there. So I'm pretty sure his agent, his manager, the production company, anybody involved with Fast 9 was like, whoa, stop the fucking press. The way the NBA punked shit out of LeBron. Right. And you bet not say shit about China. So I guarantee you that that apology came fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I where's mean, the goddamn is it? Do I no, no. There it is. They, hey man, we gotta put the come on, man. I know, I know. I haven't put them on there yet. Um so in in short, for people that don't know, from my understanding, there was basically a civil war, correct? Back in the fifties that that made Taiwan independent and China has ever since tried to retake taiwan i believe is is why they don't like them i have no idea yeah i'm pretty sure so don't quote me but also maybe look look at it so you know what we're talking about i believe in the 1950s taiwan there was a civil war between china and taiwan that made taiwan independent and since then china has never acknowledged them as their independent country and has always tried to globally suppress the message that taiwan is a place Mm -hmm. so anytime you bring them up anytime you say that they are any like those clips we were seeing last year where a journalist was asking somebody from i don't know if it was ccp or china about taiwan and he was he was pretending like she didn't he didn't hear Uh he like cut off the feed and then just and yeah and then just cut off the feed so that's the kind of shit that's been going on for the better part of 70 years i'm surprised biden they did an executive order like you you can't say what it do coming through with the wuhan flu (laughs) can't say that no you can't uh you probably can't say taiwan is a country no nope. um and these big corporations like the nba in case y'all have not noticed bro cultural marxism and the ccp and a lot of countries that that don't like us have infiltrated our entertainment our sports i mean communism there, there is a snake in the house you know this marxism has snuck in through our educational system, a lot of these teachers are Marxists. They teach in this uh, critical race theory. It's super dangerous. It's made it into our military, which had the utmost respect. And I, I dare say, you know, still has. Yeah. But they need to nip that in the bud. Uh, all this intersectional stuff that they're putting in these um, intelligence agency advertisements. Mm-hmm. I mean, big tech. Every time people, people from the left let's say fools on the food fools gone wild website they think they're part of the resistance yeah yeah we're the resistance we're the resistance no bitch you're on the side of big tech big pharma motherfucking china uh cultural marxists you know professors in these colleges that are brainwashing these kids uh, uh lebron james the nba corporations that don't give a fuck about you that's the side you're on who people be like man these trump people brainwashed who brainwashed us is there a a, a a right wing social media page i don't know about is there like some conservative how many conservative media outlets are there how many conservative entertainers how many conservative uh, football players and basketball players uh, uh how many conservative actors and comedians telling us how to think how to vote and think that we're always victims and telling us that you know little white kids that are innocent children are oppressors and a lot of these people married to white people. Don Lemon married to a white man. Lori Lightfoot married to a white woman. Talking about she ain't going to take no interviews from white people. So if you haven't seen, if you haven't woke up smoke and, uh, and smelled the bullshit by now, I don't know what fucking planet you're on. If you haven't noticed that Facebook and Twitter and Big Tech, and I'm going to watch my language because I, I know this is going <laughs> on different platforms. But if you have not noticed that the game is rigged, you know the the narrative ain't true that they're trying there's a ton of propaganda if you have not noticed there is a ton of propaganda these celebrities and hot latino hollywood and these actors i woke up this morning and i was like i was taking a leak or something and i'm thinking to myself man have i been too harsh on latino hollywood like did I should I have kept my mouth shut because maybe I just shot myself in the foot like maybe some of these actors were going to uh, give me a shot and put me in a role in a movie and now they not because they know I voted for Trump and I'm America first and I believe you know the nuclear family needs to stay strong and I don't believe 
you could be a they them. You got to be, you pick one, motherfucker. You can't be multiple people. That was your first thought this morning? Yeah, it, it, one of them. And I'm like, man, maybe I shot myself in the foot. Maybe I shouldn't be so damn vocal about like, and then I said, fuck that shit. We got RPT. <laughs> we got the podcast. We got the Patreon. I am on tour. I, I, I am a stand-up comedian. My job is to tell the truth and talk shit and point out the absurd and, and point out hypocrisy. So I, I, I felt better after that. That's but, good. Yeah, so. I like how you were able to kind of talk, your, talk yourself down off of that, yeah. uh, off that, that yeah, morning that mental ledge. Mm -hmm. So this video is from late last year, actually. It's from uh, September. No, no, no. Sorry. December-ish. Okay. And it's a sociologist. It's a Chinese sociologist that basically says uh, China's going to overtake the United States and it will drive America to its death. Sounds about right. Yeah. It sounds about right. Right. Uh, and it came back up while I was researching this John Cena thing, and it just kind of popped up. So I, I pulled it here. Uh, <clears throat> and it's all in Chinese or Mandarin or whatever the fuck language it is, right? So we're going to read some of the subtitles because it's, it's two minutes. I don't know if we'll do the whole thing, but I think the first couple of lines you might like to read Amen. to the audience. Ja they punked the shit out of John Cena. He, that motherfucker was like, Ni hao jin sena su su tu se. And in the apology, he didn't even he didn't say Taiwan again. He just It was just an apology and how... Uh, China's great. It loves everyone from China. Before we pick, play the clip, this is what they do, right? Because we've talked about this before on a prior episode. Uh, China gets on the horn, or they send a fucking telegram or the SOS, or they send one of Swalwell's spies, and they say, you, your tweet has offended 1.5 billion people, or whatever, right? 2 billion people. And you're just like, damn, uh okay, well, I have freedom of speech, so sorry that I offended. It's like, no, 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 you don't understand what we're saying. Read between the lines. You have offended two billion people. And it's like, okay, well, I said I was sorry. No, 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 no. Motherfucker, you need to retract all the way because you have offended. And it's like, Twitter's not even allowed yeah. in China. So anyway, that's how they get you. They tell you that you have offended them, aka we're going to hurt your pockets. That and was, any way other, other way we could hurt you. That was like kind of call back to last week's episode on uh, Chingo Chat, I believe. We are talking about the the Dang, the Dallas comedian thing on Tony yeah, Hinchcliffe. Yeah, Ping Dang. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're in the Vulture article. He was like, yeah, my, my family from, was reaching out to me from China about it. I was like, where did they hear? Did they see it on Twitter also that doesn't exist? Or? Well, well the, I kind of I kind of believe it in a way. This is why. Because the lens that I view the situation through is the lens that basically says that... um. China is always looking for any way to make America look bad. bad. Okay. So the minute a black man dies at the hands of a cop, the minute there's any any little discrepancy of injustice of anything, they put it in a folder and they can't wait to weaponize it and create bot accounts. Uh, they get on Twitter and argue with you. Um, they send it to their media because they control half of our media. Uh, they probably send it out to, you know, it just becomes a talking point and further proof that in their eyes that America needs to be dismantled and rebuilt so they could build back better with them at the helm. And it's a very you, good perspective. And you without rights. That's a very so good I absolutely believe it. Okay. Because remember when they went to Alaska and they had that meeting? They were like, how dare you try to talk to us? Like, yeah, that's when pretty Biden, recent. Yeah, Biden sent his people and they had a meeting in Alaska. Biden's people didn't even get to criticize them in terms of genocide or the Uyghurs or forced labor camps or, or you know, the rights that their people don't have. They didn't even get to that point. And they were already like, how dare you? Like, punk the shit out of Biden's people. Right, right. Boy, you better get back on that plane. <laughs> get back on that snowmobile. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's going to move semi-fast. So maybe just read. Uh, can you see the screen, by the way? I know it's kind yeah. of far. All right. You want me to read it? <laughs> <the way. laughs> Lower his volume. Because I'm pretty sure most of our listeners don't speak uh, Mandarin. Hey, man. Or Cantonese. Sim whichever. Here we go. It turns out that China is going to overtake the U.S. in 2027. It was said that this might be delayed for a year or two. But this year, God has pulled off a little trick, right? God created COVID-19 and spread it to every country in the world. The COVID-19 pandemic is like a test for all the countries in the world. This test is biased, though. COVID-19 is bad for Europe and America. Yeah, we noticed. 
But it is beneficial for North Korea. Okay, China. that's why North Korea is number one in the global fight, and China's number two. North Korea has zero infections, right? Zero infections. So this system can do it. Our system is good, but not as good as North Korea's. We still have 4,000 dead, right? But if 4,000 Chinese die versus 220,000 in the U.S., we haven't really lost a single person, have we? We're close to zero infections and zero deaths. If 4,000 people out of 1.4 billion people die, that's the same as no one getting sick and no one dying. So just right there, right, halfway through this little thing, how, that's fucking crazy, right? Yeah. And, and that's if you believe the CCP numbers, like... If you believe their official death tolls. But they're willing to sacrifice their people, bro. They Oh, easily. Mao, I forget Mao uh, during the Cultural Revolution of China. Tens of millions, hundred million, I don't know how many millions of people died in there. Not to, not to mention, Rob, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say, uh, I forget the exact number, like 400 million aborted female babies in China. So they have no problem wiping out a generation mm -hmm. because they know that one generation later they could re rebuild it. All they, they got is four hundred million. Jesus, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Somebody fact check me. All right. Uh, so yeah. So if if any American scientists colluded with these people and went along and helped cover up and helped deceive, helped propagandize, um, helped give them time to cover up their mess. Um, you know, I mean, everybody from the World Health Organization, anybody that was involved in this little ruse, shame on you. Man. Oh, that's treason to the highest degree. Shame on you. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, <laughs> in the global economy, China stands out. We're ahead of schedule in terms of overtaking the U.S. There will be no problem reaching this goal in 2027. The U.S. will not survive. We have struggled for more than a decade. In 2012, we achieved absolute superiority over the U.S. In the Taiwan Strait, uh, we have gained absolute superiority. The Yellow Sea, the, okay, basically they're talking about their military, how big yes. their navy is, is 10% larger than ours. Check it. We're expanding our military at a rate unprecedented in human history. We've been launching fleets equivalent to the French Navy every year for several years. One French naval tonnage per year. Pause it real quick. In the book Unrestricted Warfare, which I want to go get, it talks about different levels of warfare and how it's basically, if I'm not mistaken, that book Unrestricted Warfare is translated from old general and colonel Chinese generals. It was their playbook, their handbook, basically showing how they were going to slowly, patiently play the 100-year chess game and infiltrate our entertainment. Basically, it infiltrate us from within, their education, you know, our educational system and so on. And, um, and let's see what else, what else they got to say. Sounds like they're ready for a kinetic war. All right, here we go. As long as 1.4 billion Chinese people eat, sleep, oh. Defecate. Give us better there. Defecate and urinate every day. As long as we go to work every day, we will drive the U.S. to its death. In any case, China's development cannot be resisted or stopped. As long as one thing doesn't happen. As long as China doesn't produce a Gorbachev who would mess up China's own internal affairs and cause China to disintegrate, then nobody would be able to something. Can you say? able to resist our development yeah they have so much money bro that if you're willing to join them and you're of value to them and they pay you off um there's a lot of traders and sellouts yeah you know and, and another way to look at this is that whoever he this sociologist uh dr lee yi works with or, or for was just saying what was coming from the top because otherwise he wouldn't be allowed to say it. Exactly. Right? So 2027, 2037, 2050, this might be an inevitable truth. Uh, I, I don't see it happening in 2027. It's been three, 400 years that they've been working at this. In the United. Meanwhile, the United States has come to be what it is in less than 100 in a free society, in a world where we're not ruled the way that their people are ruled. So that's just kind of how I see it. I know that's kind of like a glass half full kind of approach. Well, as long as we don't allow people to pack the Supreme Court, dismantle the Constitution. Yeah. And, and let, you know, as long as 
we don't let Biden continue to do what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that also sounds you know, so, like stealing elections and shit. Like that. It sounds that sounds completely tinfoil hat, right? But there are aspects to that that are true. Like, I mean, if you want to see it that way, I guess a lot of people right now aren't seeing it that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're in the process of a forensic audit in multiple states. Yes. Um, do you have any any new lo- knowledge on that? A little bit. So the reason it's called a forensic audit is because the mainstream media. I, I, I want you to play this clip. Okay. I'll give you a chance to pull it up while I say this. Sure. Uh, pull up Joe Scarborough rant about election. Okay. See if that pulls up. So basically what the mainstream media, you know, the left, what uh, CNN and MSNBC, the way they're trying to spin these forensic audits that are going down, they're trying to spin it as these are right wing Trumper, crazy conspiracy people, these Mike Lindell type people that they're going through these ballots they're trying to recount them but they've already been counted guys they've been counted multiple times and then they say stuff like this they're looking for bamboo on the paper they're doing craziness it's costing the american taxpayer millions of dollars for them to go through this and it's a waste of time nothing to see here nothing to see here nothing to see here however a lot of these people involved in this forensic audit some are democrats uh some are republicans that aren't necessarily trump loyalists um they're basically patriots that believe that for the sake of half the country having confidence in our elections the last thing we want is for half the country to lose all confidence in our system and you know from my point of view it seems like these MSNBC people are, are a little wor- worried. They seem a little scared. They're kind of hot under the collar. They're starting to yell more. Uh, you can see it in their eyes. They're like, they have the ballots. They have the ballots. So right now in Arizona, they haven't got to the canvassing portion, which is what Steve Crowder was doing. They haven't got to the part where they're going to check addresses and P.O. boxes and empty fields and how did 100 people vote from this one place that isn't a thing. Um, what... These conservatives people, the America first, the populists, the nationalists, the Trumpers, what they want is they want all legal votes to count. Votes that have been verified through chain of custody, meaning it got these votes got dropped off at this drop box. It is signed by this person. It was driven by this person in this van. It was signed off here. It got delivered to the post office, signed off here by this person. Everything was received and legit. What they're finding if I'm not mistaken, in Georgia, what they're finding is uh, ballots where if they were really mail-in ballots, they'd have a crease. They'd be folded. Mm -hmm. A lot of these didn't have that crease. Some of them just look kind of like photocopied because there was like a little bubble uh, mark and it like they all had it. Um, Basically, a lot of discrepancies. And it goes back to the word forensic. Like, They're going in with a fine tooth comb to make sure that all those votes came from citizens, came from people that were alive, uh, came from people that were of, you know, 18, 18 and up. Yeah, legally able to vote. Just everything that's legal, chain of custody. They found a, a batch of votes where if you look at the chain of custody of how it was handed off, it was like, okay, there were this many uh, dropped off to that drop box at this time. But this many arrived at the uh, ballot counting station at this time. Hold on. Where's the signature? Why such a jump? Like a lot of stuff like that. And people like Mike Lindell, who stuck their neck out, who went on Jimmy Kimmel just to get made fun of. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody's get. They want to laugh you. They want to demoralize you. They want you to look crazy. For entertaining the idea that there was some shenanigans. And also doubt yourself. Yeah. And just give up. And just be like, well, fuck it. We got three more years to hang in there. Or three and a half. And we'll just try again. And we'll just try to like, you know, what is it? Every two years or Senate or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, we just got to vote again. And hopefully they don't steal this one. So listen to what MSNBC so, hosts. Is it this one? You know? It probably is that one. He's just pissed off. All right. Let's see. How many ads do you think it's going to have? Oh, it's a Newsweek article. Loyalists to get the hell out of U.S.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to hear this. 
This is MSNBC Joe Scarborough losing his shit because he's scared. He's scared that this forensic audit, because look, I think Trump only needs like two big states to overturn. They say Nevada is a cesspool, cesspool of shenanigans. They say um, Georgia yeah. is like king of just a whole bunch of cheating. Arizona, they've already found like it, it's getting to where I think they're going to summon the uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigations. To inter- like there's gonna have to be a judge that finally looks at some evidence and says, Okay, I'm gonna sign off. Is it's not gonna play? No, I keep no, sorry. It's like like this one's unloading. Yeah, like there has to be a judge that's gonna sign off and be like, Yes, I agree that we need to go back in or whatever. So it, it's getting it's getting real spicy. And even a lot of uh, like Fo- I don't even think Fox News is really covering it that much. I don't think anybody's really covering it other than independent outlets. Yeah, so the average, uh, I think you got to maybe, no, that thing, is, there it is. Who knows? I may even decide to beat them for a th- Yeah, so <laughs> it's happening. The forensic audits are happening. Um, I don't know what's, what is the protocol if they overturn and overrule because I know it's going to be some patriots out there and I know it's going to be some Antifa out there saying, no, they're trying to uh, disenfranchise voters. And, hey, those racist Republicans are cheating. They're cheating. They're trying to steal it from us. They're trying to steal it from us. When it's like, no, bitch, y'all stole it first. And that's the thing, too, that the name of the game now becomes, well, they, they stole it. So now we have to make sure we steal it from, you know, on this side. And that's where the conversation goes if there's no integrity in the elections. Third time, okay? With your help, we will take back the house. This damn video on yeah. Newsweek. All right. Uh, Maybe I could put it up on my phone, you think? Are we patched in hardwired? No, I didn't hardwire it. So we got, so for listeners, while Chingo tries to bring that up on his phone, we uh, finally got some hard. I, I brought like a 150-foot cable <laughs> with an Ethernet cable for our Zoom calls. But I guess I'm going to start doing it just for regular episodes when we pull up videos because it, it is um, not the best on Wi-Fi back here in the podcast HQ because we're deep down in the, in the tunnels of, uh, of this great country podcasting to you from uh rpt central yeah joe, what, what should i put joe scarborough yeah i typed in rant on election okay rant perfect here we go dude wait till you hear this bro um i think he dropped an f-bomb he also on tv epic anti-trump rant um let me see could it be could well, that's it be? four months ago no that's not the one that's four years ago because remember man these democrats were like um uh, uh, not my president, resist, right? Yeah. They, they kept saying Russia stole it. For right, here long? we go. This boy had a meltdown. Here we go. Earn free crypto. Just by learning about it. Add. Pinche crypto. Pinche big tech. They don't want to know the truth. They, they, they want to know what, what's true to them. They want to know their truth. And their truth is this election was rigged. Well, why don't you just Google this? And why don't you just look at the election returns? They're desecrating all the things that the American flag is a symbol of. So you will fight to the death for the symbol. You just won't give a damn for a second about the thing that symbol stands for. America, love it or leave it. If you don't have respect in American democracy anymore, if your guy doesn't win, if that's the new rules of engagement for this great republic, then just leave our country. There are millions of immigrants who will come here and raise their right hand and buy into the creed and believe that we are exceptional, that believe American democracy is the greatest government on the face of the earth. And most importantly, they will fight for what that flag represents. Will you shame yourself? Will you disgrace yourself? Get the facts. Live in the light. Follow the truth. And love this country. And stop this. You scared of an audit? What the fuck? Hey, man, I ain't never heard Democrats be that patriotic. No, until, never. Until you start to... Uh, 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 Question uh, outcomes of their side? No, really just start to really be like, hey, man, we're not convinced. And we want to take a... Fi- you know, no one's taking a fine-tooth comb to this. And uh, we want to go ahead and do it. 
within all legal means. We let's do it. Let's go. Let's go through. We want to see something. Uh, uh, love it or leave it. If you do not believe in American democracy and Madisonian checks and balances, then leave it. Then if you don't like it, then leave it. There are millions of immigrants who would raise the right hand. Shut the man. Come on, dude. You ain't never heard nobody on that side say anything like what he just said. If you don't, if you don't love him, leave it. In love the it flag, or leave it. talking about the flag. Yeah, the greatest democracy. You know, the greatest government on earth. Like what? I ain't never heard you, boy. Where that energy come from? The minute it reminds me of like you know when you're a kid and you're playing sports or something or some type of board game with other kids and and they cheating mm -hmm. like they grabbing money out the monopoly bank yeah. or something some shenanigans and you're like hey man you didn't you didn't you didn't uh check the ball when you shot it are you supposed to bring it back before you shoot it or yeah. whatever or now nah, that wasn't the score it's if, if you don't respect basketball and what it stands for then leave the court man what you scared of if somebody was a, a, a like if Trump had won, and these Democrats were really in their feelings about like, nah, man, it was some shenanigans. We know these Republicans cheated. You know, there's this evidence or whatever. But go ahead, man. Count them again. Go through. Get your black light. Look for whatever you're trying to look for. You, you thinking Russia sent these ballots or whatever. Let's go through it just so that at the end we could be like, okay, we good? We good? Fist bump? Same team? America? But earlier when you said... I don't see I don't see China taking over about 2027 or whatever. Man, normally I'd be like, yeah, I don't see it either. But when you go on this fool's gone wild page <laughs> and you look at these comments, like the stuff we're seeing, Rob, like, you know, I, I wish this could just be a funny podcast and we just shooting the shit like on some Tim Dillon and Andrew Schultz. It is, but, kinda. It, it is, it is, but you know, I have a hard time because I'm like, hey, man, this is some important shit. And although we could be like happy go lucky and be like, oh, well, fuck it. You know, if they stole it, they stole it. And oh, well, China, maybe they're a threat. Maybe they're not. Yeah. I'm just going to mind my business. It's like, yeah, man, shit's getting real, in my opinion. In my opinion, stuff's getting a little bit too close for comfort. Too many people are, are just their little tunnel vision. They're more worried about getting the pronouns right. You right. know what I'm saying? They're more worried about, um, you know, what the commercial for the army looks like or whatever versus, hey, everybody, America, let's have a huddle. We need a state of the union real quick. Everybody gather in, gather in, gather in. I know we're divided. I know there's different debates about different things. Everything's been politicized. The media, one minute they're telling the truth, one minute they're not. They retract in. They, they, there's whistleblowers. I know everything's confusing. But could we agree that there is a possibility that because we're a superpower and because this country and what it stands for, like in terms of, uh, I'll just call it the Judeo-Christian West, what we believe in in this country, what makes us Americans, like the Constitution, that must be protected. And I feel like times have been so good that we've gotten soft and so many people just really, it's just like, we're civilians. I'm not in the military. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen atrocities out there. I don't have PTSD. And I don't know that, hey, man, there's people out there that will blow themselves up just to kill some of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, those are the harsh realities. And I wish America would just have a huddle and be like, look, man, I know some of y'all believe it came from a bat. Some of y'all believe we're under attack and it was leaked on purpose or, or, or whatever. It's a bioweapon. Um, some of y'all believe in a jab, some of y'all don't, but could, I mean, even if you look at the comments on that, on that, uh, the, the, the Houston news where they were like, governor Abbott lifts all mask mandates and everyone's like, Oh my God, this governor, we need to keep the mask on. It's like, we can't agree on shit right now, but we need to agree on this. We need to agree that there are countries who don't want to see us do well. There are countries that if they could pay off a politician or a scientist or a journalist, they will. So get your head out of your ass. And Joe Scarborough, I hear your passion, but I'm sorry. You're going to have to sit this one out because half the country can't go on without closure. Half the country can't go on feeling like disenfranchised. You know, the Democrats are slick. They're smart. 
they have been going through systematically for years, changing the rules, making it in certain states to where Rob and Chingo are automatically registered for drive through uh, voting. They need to go through and opt out if they it's the default. The mm-hmm. default mode is everybody can go through a drive through and vote. Uh, they want to make it racist to where you, you got to show ID and prove who you are and all this other crap. You know, when we voted um, with the place we were at. Did you mail it in? Fuck no. I mean, it was a pandemic, Rob. We had to. Dude, the lines in the area in, in, in Sugarland, all those southwest Houston areas, the lines everywhere were long. Okay. But luckily you had days and days and days in advance. So even though they were long, some days were shorter, whatever. I will say that the day that we were there at least half a dozen people just from the time because we're you know the lines outside then you get into the building and then you get from into the building into the place where the machines are and all that jazz from where we could hear people that were actually uh casting their ballots and talking to the to the volunteers i guess that were there at least half a dozen of them weren't able to vote because their vote had already been processed Ooh. somehow well if you don't like it then leave and it's just like shenanigans. And it's like no one's expecting these areas to be blue. Um, no one's expecting any kind of fuckery in these areas. But at the same time, it happened. Where did the where where did the vote get casted? What side did it get casted for? It's just a weird. I mean, sure, these are just strange anomalies, but they happen nonetheless. And if they happen on a great scale, like a great grand scale, who knows what the outcome could have been? In some of these states, it was down to a sliver. Of, yeah. of how they a lot man- of them. Yeah. yeah, of how they managed to cheat. Um, for example. In Texas, our leadership, our politicians fought tooth and nail. I think it was um, Attorney General Ken Paxton and I believe Governor Abbott fought. And you can't blame those machines. You almost can't say those machines' names anymore because it's like there was no actual evidence that those machines caused anything and they'll fucking take your content down. Okay. Well, in Texas, Governor Abbott and uh, Ken Paxton fought to keep those machines. Yeah. You know, the dumb... <laughs> onion we'll call it that <laughs> you know the dumb onion machines uh they came from venezuela yeah that's how chavez got in a in office um you mentioning uh you know times being really good remind me of that quote uh, the hard times create strong men strong men create good times good times create weak men and weak men create hard times and masculinity is under attack the nuclear family is under attack all of those are cultural marxist principles um uh, in all that it, p- identity politics and intersectional uh, critical race theory crap, it's all Marxist, and they're teaching it to your kids. And these parents are getting pissed off. They starting to go up. To, they starting to vote out all these um, the school board people. You know the soccer moms ain't having it. You know, I feel like folks like yourself and and me and these parents are the majority. Yeah. However, big tech and the media wants to demoralize you and want you to give up and make you feel like, oh, no, no, you're the little silent minority. You're the silent minority. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Shut them up. Big tech, shut them down. Twitter, shut them. Facebook, there's another one. Shut them up. And, and you go on these fools going wild pages, <laughs> which uh, they posted. They posted this uh, Mexican dude with the Trump hat. And he had like a flag in the background and all this. Um, he looked like he could be like Nino America's homeboy. Or something. <laughs> he even had like a Star of David on the wall in the Damn. back. But he was doing some rap, and these fools going wild. People they posted it, and of course, all the leftist cholos are like, "Lame ass Leva fool! This fool, he must be smoking scante. Orale, he's over there shooting up. How dare you, man? What a sellout! It's all these Chicanos on there who don't have the nuts to recall Newsom, mm. talking about." Uh, they probably want to wear their mask for the rest of their fucking life. Orale, look at this lame ass fool. How could you vote for Trump, eh? How could you be for America first? It should be America last, homeboy. This fool's lame. And it's like motherfuckers with check marks on there. He probably has low sock energy, homie, and this and that. I went on there, left three comments. <laughs> I went on there and said, um, lame ass Leva, everybody knows to be a down ass fool, you got to vote for the white man from Delaware. Because that's what y'all did. They, they, they tricked you into thinking that if you vote for one white man instead of the other white man. See, that's how smart the white liberal is. It's no coincidence our education sucks. It's no coincidence that if you look at all the flags of all the different groups in America, 
the black community and the brown community, we way at the bottom yeah. of the social economics. You got Sri Lanka, Jamaica, all these other flags, man. They getting that money. Indonesia, everybody, Malaysia, everybody getting money, money, money. They do the uh, the gross household income. Man, black and brown people, we at the bottom. And how do we always vote? Like some fucking pendejos. Pardon my language. Um, so I left one comment. You got to vote for the white man from Delaware to be down. And then I also said, uh, I bet y'all won't recall Newsom. And uh, I can't remember the other one. On that Chef Gruel clip, um, somebody had posted like, what do y'all get y'all's news from? I, everything here is open and it's back to normal. And then other TIA members went back and replied to that person like, what are you talking about? Like in this part, you know, it's everything's closed, Hunting Beach, this, that, and the other. And it's just like, there's always that one person that seems to think that I guess when they walk outside, they have rose-colored glasses on, and everything's just hunky-dory. I think they missed the point. What we posted from Chef Gruel, it said one in three California restaurants uh, were shut down. Like, right. Had to close permanently. <clears throat> yes. One out of three restaurants had to close permanently in California. Somehow, some way, this person's comment was, what do you mean we're open? It's like, no, 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 we're not saying you're, you're not open and you can't walk down the street and, and go spend money somewhere. We're saying one in three California restaurants was forced to close permanently. But, but, but we're open. We're not saying y'all not open. I know y'all open because I got shows coming up, <laughs> right? We're saying one out of three restaurants. Man, reading, bro, reading comprehension. These Marxist teachers, man, these teachers unions, bro. Yeah. Y'all need to come on, man. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff uh, that Don and I are getting for the kids for the, for the summer. Like, uh, I forgot what program it was, but it's either an app-based program or you can do it on the computer where it's like all the, you know, the fundamentals. They're going in the first grade. So going in the first grade, I've always been like, they've got to be ahead of the curve. They're already mm -hmm. pretty smart little kids, but when they get there, I don't want anything to be a shock to them, mm -hmm. you know? I want to, mm -hmm. like, we've gone through that. Like, they're already reading on a second plus, you know, grade level. So everything that they do, we always give them like a notch above it. You know, the books that are numbered for the ages and they do relatively well. And when it comes to counting, multiplying, uh, memorization, because that's still important in school, a lot of this shit is just read it, remember it, have to take a test. All right. I've never been a fan of standardized tests, but it is what it is. Um, everything that you need to know going to first grade that may or may not be taught and they may not get the attention that they need because there's 20, 30 kids in the classroom. Got to make sure that this summer, and this just goes out to all the parents too, like uh, look, look for it. And if you're in part of the TIA and you have questions, you know, post about it in the, in the comments and on one of the posts, and I'm sure we'll, we'll answer your questions, but that's super crucial because if your kid's also been out of school, like a lot of the kids were, they're already a little bit further behind than others that didn't have to. What you were saying about all the educational stuff um, brought this to mind. There's a movement going on. You can check the hashtag. It's called Black Minds Matter. Okay. And they're obviously not leftists. These are, I'm assuming, a little bit more conservative. But basically, the statistics that they put out, they're basically arguing that if you want to talk about systemic racism or systemic oppression in America, you have to look at the teachers' unions and our educational system. The statistics are staggering. It, it, it's something like 15% of black seniors are reading at their level, like uh, high school kids. You know what I mean? Like 13% of black students are performing math at their level. You know what I mean? Like there is a problem. And that translates to by the time kids graduate, what, what happens in college? Like, kids are getting left behind. And this year, more than ever, like, especially California kids, mm -hmm. they locked them down so much that they pretty much lost a year. So we already had a shitty educational system in this country. Now we about to be even more behind. And we are in competition with other countries. Yeah. Real motherfucking talk. Um, if, you, if you saw the Russian military ad versus ours... <sighs> They take themselves serious. Bro. These Russians ain't playing with y'all, man. Keep thinking it's a game. Um, and that's what I was preaching at, uh, at my comedy show. I was like, look, man, couples, how long y'all been together? Oh, 10 years. Man, congratulations. Give it up for them. Like, that is rare. You know, basically, like, the family, the nuclear family, like, we need to start having these kids and raising them right. It's like, we need little patriots, bro. Yeah, and I said this quote a while back. It was a, a meme, a quote that I saw. It was like, you know, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And mm -hmm. that, that rings so true. I, I posted that and my sister got upset. <laughs> She's like, you're going to have to educate me about what the hell you're talking about. That's funny. No, but 
I, I was driving around, I was listening to something, and it made me think, because I've always been of the, of the mind, and you know, fortunately for me, the work ethic is always forced to be there. Even though I didn't want to do a lot of the shit growing up, didn't want to do the cattle shit, didn't want to do none of the ranch stuff, it instilled a certain work ethic that never goes away. And all my friends are the same way. Like, you attract those people around you that are like you. I don't hang around with no weak-ass white people, no weak black people, no weak Mexicans. Everybody that I know are so of the, if I say, dale gas, doesn't matter if you're black, Asian, they're white, they know what I'm saying, because I've been saying it since I was little. And they, ganas. Y todos le echan ganas, y todos le dan gas. And that's the kind of thing that you want to perpetuate. You don't want to perpetuate the, I can't, I won't, I'm going to be Victims. whatever. Yeah, man, that's just, it's not going to help. And if we don't get this critical race theory out of our schools, which, which uh, CRT, that shit came from the Frankfurt School. Look, look it up, uh, F-R-A-N-K-U-R-T. All this is Marxist shit. All this has been with the end goal of dismantling America. So what they're doing to these kids with this critical race theory is they're telling the black kids and the brown kids, congratulations, you're fucked. <laughs> There's systemic oppression and you ain't never going to be shit because you're a victim. And then they tell the, the poor white kids, congratulations, you're a fucking oppressor and we need to decolonize you. And y'all are the colonists, and this is stolen land, and historically, y'all are evil, and America didn't start in 1776, it started in 1619, and fuck the, and the Constitution is racist, and that's why we gotta dismantle it. It's like, pump your motherfucking brakes, and stop with the boo-boo. Get your head out of your ass, man, and stop thinking that anybody that's talking the way I'm talking is a sellout. That is not true. We already done went over this. What we want is we want... Your kids to be well, y'all to be safe, your community to be safe, for there to be some law and order where you live, and, and for you to have a strong economy, for there to be jobs, you know what I mean? For us to have a strong country with a strong military, and we ain't no fucking punks. But they, they bamboozling us into fighting our neighbor and weakening ourselves. Meanwhile, China ain't playing no motherfucking games. Russia ain't playing no, none of these countries are playing games. Iran, all these countries, man. So let's segue into uh, the last two stories before we wrap up the show. Uh, a little bit of Texas news here, but I don't know if you saw this. Uh, go ahead. Texas governor to sign law preventing the defunding of police, setting up another clash with cities. What does that part mean, setting up another clash? With well, look he's going to have who, beef. Well, look who it's from, yeah. Basically, he's going to be beefing with Austin. Oh, okay, yeah, the Washington Post wrote this. Do you know what prompted this? Mm -mm. So there was a shooting on Thursday in downtown Austin. Mm. And uh, here, actually, this is his tweet from after the incident. Okay, Governor Abbott says, this is what defunding the police looks like. Austin is incapable of timely responding to a victim shot in the head. Texas won't tolerate this. We're about to pass a law that I will sign that will prevent cities from defunding police. Sanity and safety will return. And then he, that was a quote retweet. And the original tweet was from Kenneth Cassidy. And he says, APD case number, blah, blah, blah. Shooting call came out at 5.35 a.m. this morning. No units available citywide for 12 minutes. First APD patrol unit assigned at 5.47 a.m. APD made scene at 5.51 a.m. 16 minutes after the call came out. Victim critically injured after being shot in the head. Yeah, so one died and one injured. And then somebody in the comments said, 12 minutes is bad. You didn't respond for a major statewide disaster for three weeks. They always got to take it back to some bullshit. <laughs> they always got to be like, oh, yeah. I didn't even see the replies, honestly. They always got to be like, oh, yeah, well, what happened when Ted Cruz went to Cancun? Oh, they do still love they bringing love that one bringing up, that man. up. Man, I brought it up. I brought up um, how Governor Newsom shut down the beaches and the restaurants for Fourth of July, which was right after June gloom, which is... A time when restaurant restaurateurs like Chef Gruel mm -hmm. have to stock up on food and inventory and steaks and all kind of perishables just to get the news last minute that Governor Newsom's like, psych, don't open, everything shut down, let your food go bad. And then the following Monday, he's like, okay, never mind, we can open back up. And it's like, that's some whole ass shit. Oh, yeah, so I would tell somebody that and they'd be like, Oh, yeah, kind of like how uh, Ted Cruz went to Cancun when y'all were freezing. And it's like, well, a senator don't have shit to do with our power grid, but okay. <sighs> Texans could carry handguns without a permit under bill headed to Governor Greg Abbott's desk. Yes. Yeah, so... Is that the rain? Dude, are oh, we going wow. on the fucking 11th day, straight day is, of is rain? It, is it 11 days? It's like 10 or 11 days of straight fucking rain. Yeah, man. Um, it's that bullshit. Yeah. 
it's uh it's climate kind of like climate change what is it i don't know well that's the next thing i want to scare you about. i know right um so there's already like i think 20 plus other states that have this same like they're calling texas is calling it the um the con- like the constitutional carry where it, the way it should be going you know taking it back to the second amendment texans should be able to carry and not have to pay for licenses and all that but there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of things that so the house and the senate had to negotiate this right so there's still things like uh cops you know questioning you when you get pulled over you know if you don't have a license but you're still able to carry like you have to you know answers whatever questions that they ask you uh you get free they're providing like free online training you know for weapon uh carriers and there's a lot of things that still it's not like just like everybody go grab a gun and no one's gonna check it no one's gonna check numbers no one's gonna check names or anything so that's kind of where we are right now and you know you know what's interesting man is like all the things that governor um abbott and Governor DeSantis are doing, you know, like things that are for the citizen. Like, for example, DeSantis says uh, you're able to sue big tech for a hundred grand if they censor you. Right. Um, what Abbott is doing about, you know, protecting the police from being defunded so that the citizens can have a better, you know, more safety. You would think that the average citizen, like, for example, mask mandate. Mm-hmm. You would think people would look at all this stuff and be like, wow, that's a good governor. I envy you guys. Wow, it must be really cool to live in a red state like Texas because you could take the mask off, you can carry your gun, you could be free, you could be, you could have that be the normal. But instead, I'm convinced that the brainwashing, I mean, they took some fucking fabuloso, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what they use to wash people's pinches sesos. <laughs> they have brainwashed people to the point that they would be like, Pff, okay you can carry a gun uh that's stupid or like oh you don't want the police to be defunded (laughs) well that's racist right because like they shoot black people for fun isn't that what they do or like oh great you can take the mask off well that's neanderthal thinking it's like get your head out your ass well that made your boy made news again Uh uh-oh beto o'rourke says well here's a headline from newsweek Democrats back Beto O'Rourke for Texas governor as Greg Abbott to sign carry gun bill. Now, Beto, you, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Quit worrying about our guns, bro. Do you uh, any comment before we listen to this and you can tell me who he exactly he sounds like? Um, this I think this clip must have been a little old, but they're using it for this week's um Why are they article? so why are they so anti-gun? Why do they try to conflate um like random mass shootings with Good. This is why we need gun control. It's like, so you're going to take guns away from the good guys because you got one random asshole. Yeah. And what's the quote? We're, we have a uh, mental illness problem disguised as a gun control problem. We have a mental illness problem and addiction problem disguised as a homelessness problem. Facts. There have even been some who've suggested that I stay in Texas and run for Senate. And lose. But that would not be good enough for this community. That would not be good enough for El Paso. Doesn't he sound exactly like good Obama? For this country, we must take the fight directly to the source of this problem. That person who has caused this pain and placed this country in this moment of peril, and that is Donald Trump. <laughs> the kind of challenges that we face in this country <laughs> at this moment of crisis require an urgency. Unless we want to reap. Oh, fuck. I was hoping... Consequences of failing to meet them. Consequences that we lived and I hope learned from in El Paso on August 3rd. Stop trying to use that one mass shooting as your fucking end-all, be-all for everything. It was unfortunate that an asshole who was fucking obviously kooky out of his mind, Mm -hmm. drove to El Paso and shot innocent people out of Walmart. That was sad. That was tragic. That was disgusting. But don't use that to come for my guns, Bethel. Just 20 more seconds. Got it. You had to come and take it. To those places where Donald Trump has been terrorizing and terrifying (laughs) and demeaning our fellow Americans, that's where you will find me in this campaign. I hope you lose, Bethel. (sighs) <sighs> I'm going to go out of my way to make sure you lose because I don't like what you stand for. I don't like that you're anti-gun, you're anti-Second Amendment, and I'm sorry, but this ain't Australia, this ain't England, this ain't China. We have the Second Amendment for a reason, and it's also a reason that we're the last beacon of hope. We're the place where everybody wants to move to. 
You know, uh, I was having coffee with my buddy. I was telling you earlier, and we were ta- we literally sat for like three hours because we hadn't seen each other in a couple months, and uh, we we're talking about all this kind of stuff, the RBT content we're making, and he's he's you know pretty big into politics, just having been in the military and the you know working in energy and all that shit. He's interested in it, right? But it's so crazy sometimes that he'll just like try to disassociate from it because there's so much going on. But anyway, we we're talking about it for about three hours, and he. I didn't really know how Lena Hidalgo had become our Harris County judge, right? So I guess I'll kind of tease it with that and maybe I'll have him call on Friday and just have him explain how exactly she got into that seat of power because I didn't know how. Mm. And it was very interesting. I don't even know. Right. Nope. Nobody really knows. All of a sudden, she just kind of showed up because the prior judge, from what I understand, was a conservative Republican for a long time. And there was some, I don't remember the story exactly, but I'll have him tell it so that we can be like, oh. Well, that makes sense why this person, no one really knows, no one really cares so she, for. she didn't get voted in? She got voted in, but it was on one of those... Like technica- technica- oh, yeah, loophole. Yeah, I forgot what it was. It was either the incumbent um, was in some hot water for something or decided to not campaign. I forgot what it was, but all in all, it wasn't something that the people chose her and the people rallied for her. It wasn't that kind of thing. Wow. By any means, so... And it, and, it, and it proved to be an important position because... When all this stu- all this stuff was happening, she's the one that had the power to lock us down and and say Harris County's a red county, regardless of how many cases. Until last week, dude, we were red county yeah. until last week. And, and her her thing was when people would be like, "Shouldn't we be yellow or in the clear?" And then she'd be like, "Well, if you make it not be red and scary, <laughs> then people will let their guard down, and we will not flatten the curve. And then you know, me and my monkey boots will not be able to explore." Dora. <laughs> oh man, where are you Coman- gonna be? Comandante. Comandante. Uh, I'm headed to Ontario, California. That's right. Where hopefully they recall Governor Newsom. Wish me luck. I'm a little nervous about California, man. I know there's a lot of patriots out there. I know in places like Oxnard, where we're gonna be, uh, you know, Irvine, all these places, Brea, San Jose. I-, I know there's some patriots out there. There's some people that aren't crazy about their lockdowns not everybody's a lefty larry not everybody got brainwashed and even if you are a democrat and you still want to be a chingo fan that's cool too none of my jokes are political they're really not uh it's just about life and and me i'm i'm the butt of the joke Mm -hmm. um so yeah man i'm headed to ontario california july 14th it is a freedom of speech tour we have oxnard california july 15th irvine california august 11th san jose august 18th and wish me luck man wish me luck i'm a little nervous you know because texans have a reputation of being self-loathing coconuts Mm. uh you know crazy trumpy conspiracy theorists who love their guns and don't want to give them up they don't want to get rid of the mask and you know they're anti-jab and all this other you know shenanigans they they like like choice yeah it's almost like they believe the elections may have not been the cleanest clearest in history crazy kooky people they they like cheap gas over there <laughs> <laughs> they like freedom crazy people they like thinking for themselves and having common sense yeah man so i guess uh the common theme for today was keep your head on a swivel man you know america is under attack in my opinion these other these other countries are not playing fair they want to take us out by any means necessary um everything's been politicized but more than anything, what we need is the lions to rise up and prepare and raise your kids right and care about your community and keep your family tight. Don't let them attack your patriotism. Don't let them attack your masculinity. Stand strong. Hold the line. Puro RPT a la verga, cuh. Se la lavan y se toman lava. Thank you, guys. Spread the word. Join the Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and be a member of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Sas.